The Airbnb summer release will change the way that you run your Airbnb business at least two different ways. We're gonna cover those two today, plus many others in videos to come. But today I need to talk to you about an old strategy I used to teach called the split strategy, and that's back. And then another topic which I teach in private, but I'm gonna give it to you today for the very first time called radial proximity from points of interest. You're gonna need to know both. Let's go. Welcome back YouTube world. Pleasure to see you all again. I wanna start with the split strategy. The last time I talked about this was in Thailand with my friend Anthony. That video is years. We're talking four something years old. And this technique has had meaningful results in certain markets, it always has. But Airbnb summer release just changed the way that this works and I think everybody with a big enough property should add the split strategy to their listing. The second thing that I'm teaching at the end of the video does squarely apply to apartments as well, guys. So if you have just apartments and not houses, stick around to the end for that or skip ahead. So first, what is a split strategy? A split strategy is where you have a big property, say four bedroom, five bedroom house, and you run that as an entire listing. That's your main thing. And then you also have private rooms listed. There's a strategy for this. You don't just make private rooms and call it a day. They'd conflict. So we're going to cover that in a second, but that's essentially the idea. So you're splitting your listing up into not just your entire space, but private rooms as well to try to capture different customers. And a lot of you may scoff at this, but please hear me out. The reason why this matters now, Airbnb's winter release just put out something called Airbnb Rooms. This is an attempt for them to continue to build their business in a novel, unique, hard to compete with way. See, Booking.com doesn't wanna do private rooms and houses. Verbo doesn't wanna do it. Marriott's homes and villas likely will never ever touch this. So this is one of those things Airbnb thinks it can lay claim to because of course they were air mattress bed and breakfast in the beginning, right? Just sleeping in living rooms. Private rooms is a step up from that. And so they really wanna expand their offering to budget friendly, more stay with the host kind of experiences. And that's why also, here's a pro tip, your photo on Airbnb, if you wanna do Airbnb rooms, it can't be a company logo. It has to be your face because they are trying to brand it as the welcoming stay with the host thing again. It's when they had the most growth. So there's a strategic element here. I will argue, and I think we did a past video on this, that Airbnb is also seeing the recession to come. So this is a way to scoop up some more money from hotels by finally offering something cheaper than hotels. Because of course, Airbnb has been getting it bad in the news lately that Airbnbs just aren't cheap anymore. So there's that. So what does this mean for you? Well, it means that you could have your one main group of customers that pay an arm and a leg for your space, Hopefully they book eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks in advance. Weekends only maybe sometimes, right? And then you can have your last minute customers, maybe more weekday customers, who are only taking the leftovers on your calendar and booking a private room. There are multiple ways to make sure that your properties don't get double booked or that people aren't booking your private room far, far in advance and then ruining the ability of the whole calendar to get booked. And I'll tell you one of them. Everything else that I teach in private, hyper-optimized stuff, I gotta keep it for my, my main guys because I love those guys in Cracking Super Host. But what you can do is you can make all of your private room listings set to unavailable by default. Then what you do is you have your main listing open for forever I recommend forever, guys. Don't do a three month, six month, one year window. Open it into perpetuity for the sake of getting views. It's better for your SEO. And then as your calendar books up, right? As you get your weekend bookings, your big bookings, all those leftover dates will be available maybe two weeks from now, three weeks from now. That's when you can open up those private rooms and get more last minute guests. Because here's the truth, guys. A group of 14 is not gonna book for a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five days from now. They're just really not. You might as well take your six bedroom house and for 50 to 70 dollars a night per let people book tuesday through thursday you might even get just as much weekday money from private rooms as you would have got on your entire weekday stay far in the future instead of dropping your rates a ton and i know a lot of you don't like to drop your rates a lot right because problem guests people who throw parties aren't booking private rooms so you're safe there i do have other techniques that will automate this for you so you don't have to constantly check your calendar and it doesn't require using a channel manager you can do it completely for free if you want to learn some of my really cool hacks including a new market research technique that i came up with now that the summer release has changed some features we've got a cool new split testing a b testing thing that we get to do now i can teach you that too but that's going to be inside of cracking super host where i do zooms four hours a week every saturday you can learn anything you want to learn unabashed everything i do in my company no gatekeeping 
So go click the link or whatever and talk to my team about becoming a part of Cracking Suprust. It'll be fun. But the idea here in summary is to increase your overall revenue and occupancy by allowing individuals or couples to travel and pay for your rooms. Just the leftover dates. So you can either fight on price using a really crazy dynamic pricing strategy, which they do work, or you can also now have private rooms, which means you don't have to lower your price as much to get booked because the private rooms become more of a safety net kind of thing. Really consider that, guys. Now, the second, radial proximity from points of interest is something that I've always taught in private during my market research stuff. And since I've got other new private techniques, I can give you guys this one for free. This one's old news. We've got some new private stuff. But radial proximity from points of interest can sound just like what you might think it sounds like. See, I'm next door to the American Airlines Center right here. So is the W. The W definitely built themselves right next to the American Airlines Center for a reason. Now, across the street is a building called The Ascent, a place that I used to live in 2018, went to Thailand. And they now allow people to do Airbnb, but they charge you not only full rent, but 25% of your revenue as well. That's a bad deal. But now, let's say you searched the American Airlines Center on Airbnb. All of those properties right there show up. And that is the new feature that Airbnb has added. You can actually search for properties based on distance from point of interest. They advertised one thing, but it's not going the way that they advertised, let me tell you. They said that they will tell you how far away a listing is from the point of interest, that they'll just give you that. But in my attempt to find that, I was searching different points of interest, trying to find where it might like show you how far away stuff is. In my attempt to validate their claims, I found that the way that they populate listings is completely different than if you don't search for a point of interest. So let me give you some screenshots. If you just search Dallas, they're gonna rank you based on your occupancy, your reviews, all sorts of other stuff, their interest algorithm. But when you search for a point of interest, that location becomes a key weighted factor in how interesting they think listings will be for you. So now they take their regular interest algorithm and then weight it against their like new, like location distance based data, jam it together. And all of a sudden nothing's interesting. And they only show you the stuff that's immediately close. With bigger guest counts, the search starts to get a little bit more jumbled. And that shows us that there's still some interest algorithm built in somewhere. But for the smaller listings, like for guests two, three, four, five count, they're really just doing location only. So if you can be super close to a destination, you can basically hijack SEO and get to the very front of search with almost any listing, as long as the guest is searching for that space. There's going to be a ton more videos on the summer release. So subscribe if you want to know more about the summer release and all the little hacks inside, because as hosts, we can use it to our advantage as long as we study and do a good job. So if you have questions in the comments is where you can find me, because I will respond down there. And until the next video, guys, I will see you on the other side.